There's no crime in baseball. There's no crime in law enforcement. Uh, that was the persona. I think that we are moving away from that. I think people and the profession is much, much, uh, they're a little more ready to accept that a human being can't take 30 or, or 20 years of this and not have a negative effect. We're cops. We're supposed to take it. We're, we've got broad shoulders. Uh, we can handle it, and, and that's, that's gotten um, officers in the profession in, into trouble. Moberly, Missouri Police Chief Troy Link has been an officer for over a quarter of a century. I've been to uh, enough scenes that um, I've seen a lot. For officers who spend most of their adult life as a police officer, years of difficult experiences can affect their mental health. Car accidents, um, violent crime, suicides, um, we, we, us, emergency services, fire, ambulance, we're all responding to those uh, on a pretty frequent basis. Kirksville Police Chief Jim Hughes' police career is 40 years long. We see people, good people, who get victimized uh, by situations and, and events that they had no control over, uh, and we see that over and over and over again. Uh, we see the impacts of, of life-changing events on people over and over and over again. According to NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, more than twice as many police officers die from suicide each year than from homicide. I've worked with five different police officers that have committed suicide. Three and a half percent of people experience symptoms of PTSD, but for police officers, that number is seven to 19%. I think overall, most of that is a cumulative effect. You have stress, you have uh, shift work that is all over the place, you have poor eating habits, uh, you have no time or you're just too tired to go exercise. All of those things bleed into this where suddenly I start to suffer the effects of depression, probably related to stress, and then it just seems to downturn from there. A police officer candidate is required to undergo a psychological test before they become an officer. But after that, the only other time a psychological screening is required is when an officer is involved in a critical incident or lethal force situation. I think that recognizing when there's a potential problem early and getting it stopped, or at least making the effort to provide them resources to get it stopped is important because once it gets entrenched, it's even more difficult to get, get back on the right side of things. Chief to chief, the department leaders are figuring out a solution for their officers themselves. We don't have the services that are readily available like Kansas City, St. Louis, or Springfield do. Um, we're gonna, we think that uh, perhaps a solution is create our own. The two chiefs came up with a peer support counseling group. Agencies uh, in Northeast Missouri get officers that are trained as a peer support counselor. Uh, they're on an activation list and they go to whatever agency needs them and actually provide some peer support counseling within about 24 hours of that critical incident happened. So it would be a good thing. It would it'd be a way for the officers, everybody involved in it, the dispatchers, the EMTs, the fire guys, to all sit down and kind of talk about uh, that critical incident, how it affected them. And it seems to be once they talk about it, get those feelings out, realize that they're not alone, they're not bottled up, and it helps with the healing and the growth process after that, which may help down the road eliminate some of the PTSD symptoms that may come up with a long-term career. Heather Adkins works at Mark Twain Behavioral Health in the Emergency Room Enhancement Program as a care coordinator. A new partnership with the police is helping to transform decades-old stigmas. We're doing debriefings regularly um, with officers about, you know, when thing when it's not some major incident, when it's just everyday stressors. It takes the first step and gets officers in the door, showing them help is there if they need it. We feel kind of like a big family, you know, like um, it's not mental health and law enforcement where we've kind of molded that together to where we are working together. The last three years out of that 40 years has just been an incredible turnaround. Uh, the receptivity, the collaboration that we have with the mental health uh, practitioners and the clinicians, uh, you know, those providing the, the treatment um, has just been inc incredible.